BioBalance HealthCast episode 199, Exciting Advances in Cancer Research. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. This morning, Dr. Moppin and I are going to be talking about something she's very excited about. There's some new research that's been coming out over the summer at several different locations, uh, one of which was the American Society for Clinical Oncology and their national conference. Uh, the stories involve a lot of technical terminology that Dr. Moppin is going to have to explain for me, perhaps not for you. <laughs> but the exciting part of it is that they, they are beginning to accumulate a good deal of data in some experimental research that they've been doing that takes an individual's own immune cells and expands them, and we'll talk about what that means, and puts them back in. And as a result of what happens when it's expanded, it seems to be developing the ability to destroy cervical cancer in a significant percentage of the population. And by destroy it, I mean it, they believe that it kills the existing cervical cancer and prevents it from ever coming back. And so that's pretty exciting news. And some other research that's in tangent with this also talks about things like lung cancer and kidney cancer. So they're, be they're beginning to look at ways to use your own immune system and enhance it that are not considered genetic engineering uh, no, or manufacture of some different. kind of false. It's not yeah. different than your own body. It's okay. not your, it is your own T cells, your so, own so white talk cells. Talk to us about that. So this is a, this is exciting in several for several reasons. One is that um, we talk about cancer. We've talked about cancer multiple right. times before, and we've talked about it really being a breakdown in your immune system. It's, we make cancer cells every day in every, in every organ, and we kill them with our security system. And our security system, like you would have in your house, is, is our immune system. Our immune cells from our thymus and from our bone marrow are cells that actually go and seek out an abnormal cell. They, they then are genetically, um, they genetically pattern themselves to kill that particular cell. So then they recruit other T cells that also have the same target and they kill that cell. And then you don't get cancer because it can't multiply, it's killed. So this is what we do when we're young. In general, if our immune cells are intact and we have a good immune system, then we can combat bad genetics, uh -huh. which would make us make lots more abnormal or cancer cells than other people. So, so this is using what we've been talking about and this is using the, our own system, and actually it comes from stem cell therapy. Stem cell therapy from your own stem cells, autologous stem cells. Right. That's where we learned how to activate cells. Right. So we took stem cells from our bone marrow, we activate them with a growth factor and make them much more um, assertive, aggressive, or and multiply faster. Then we put those stem cells back into a knee, or we put it into like my. I've had them put into my thumb joints that have become abnormal, abnormally um, arthritic because of my doing delivering babies and and using instruments that were really made for men. So you know that caused me to have damage. Stem cells fixed it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we're doing the same thing with T cells and we're activating our own T cells and those T cells are then going to the target, to the melanoma, to the cervical cancer and causing that cancer to be killed by our own immune system, which so, is amazing. So do they get T cells the same way they get stem cells? I mean, they, they take blood samples and put them in a centrifuge and spin them out? Well, stem cells usually come from bone marrow. Okay. And T cells come from your own blood. Okay. So so bone marrow is the, is is the nursery right for all of our our blood cells but the and we can get t cells from there okay and then we multiply them and activate them right and that comes from blood but when we're doing stem cells that's from our bone marrow okay those are cells that can become anything so they they take the t cells out then and they multiply and activate them do you know what that means exactly they put them in a solution of growth i don't know exactly what they're using for their uh, uh, growth factors, mm -hmm. but they're adding growth factors and activators that they've developed 
from what we do in our in our bodies, they've taken the same kind of process and they're they're multiplying it, they're magnifying well, they're it. They're not doing anything to it other than speeding up its own growth cycle. Right. Cycle. Making making So it, they replicate themselves. Yeah, making quicker. more cells faster. Right. Yes. And then they take those cells and and put them back in and so all of a sudden Into instead blood. of an army of ten thousand, you have an army of a hundred thousand. Right. And that exactly. gives you so much more defensive capacity to protect your body and kill the cancer cells. That's right. That's what they're doing. And so, and so then the reports are very exciting. They're saying that the data uh, indicates, um, let me find it quickly here in the notes, a 25% uh, in excess of a 25% gain uh, for people that are responding positively to the killing of their cervical cancer cells. And they kill them from forever. the ones who do this as compared to the placebo group that doesn't get it. Right. Um, and just like chemotherapy kills the cells but does uh -huh. not activate your immune system, so you're at risk for, for recurrence because if your immune system can't kill the next cell that becomes cancer, right. then then you still are at risk for that if your tissue's still there. Like if you have had a if a woman's had a mastectomy and she had breast cancer and all the breast cells are gone, mm -hmm. then her chance of getting breast cancer are very low because she has she doesn't have that kind of cell anymore. But if you you still have the cells, then if you are if you have um, gotten your cells activated or if you had your T cells activated for that, then it's going to kill it forever. Mm -hmm. They they have memory, and they remember that cancer. But they but you can't do that with chemotherapy. That's not how it works. And he says that not all patients respond. That's but true. those who do experience the gain. And they didn't say in the article which patients didn't respond. Mm -hmm. But my my supposition in reading articles in the same vein would be the, the people that didn't respond would be the people who are over 60. And those are st the same people as stem cell patients, autologous stem cell patients that don't respond because... They don't have as many or as active or as teachable T cells after we get past 60, and some women after 50. So our body isn't able to multiply and activate those T cells. So I would I would assume that that has a lot to do with age. So are there lifestyle choices that we make? as we age that causes us to lose that ability or is that just a natural function of, of the aging process? As you get older, your system is less capable of generating those things. As we as we get older, we're less capable of generating them, but genetics always plays a part. Some people uh -huh. delay their um, the senescence or going to sleep of right. their immune system until way later and something else gets them like heart disease or that's a genetic factor then we have lifestyle factors like drinking and smoking and obesity and not working out and not exercising all of those decrease the activity of your immune system but the one trigger that we always talk about and we always deal with is testosterone right. so testosterone is uh, an immune stimulator it doesn't stimulate abnormal activities of t cells but it stimulates actually the multiplication and the learning capability of a T cell to learn to kill a certain cell and continue to kill it. One of the things that you can you can tie this to is oftentimes we give flu shots to people who are over 60, mm -hmm. obviously. But if they don't, if they are in the group that had genetics that had their immune system go to sleep early, or if they've had any of these bad habits, or if they don't have any testosterone, oftentimes they can't develop an immunity to that virus that we, to flu. We can't, they don't get an immunity to it. They still get the flu. Right. So oftentimes they don't give, or doctors don't give immune um, or immunizations to because in immunization i think you have to understand how that works they give you a a dead version of the virus right. it's not alive it can't multiply and, and hurt you but they give you a dead version of the virus which then brings the t-cells to it patterns them to kill that virus if you're exposed to it right so if you don't have t-cells well, and, and that's what's dramatic about this study is because cervical cancer is a viral cancer yes it is and so the, it's like developing an immunity to a virus but from within your system, but for you. Most adults nowadays yeah. who um, there who have had more than one lifetime, both of them have had more than one lifetime partner. Right. 
and most that's usually most people. Mm-hmm. Most adults have been exposed to HPV virus mm-hmm. because it's it's been rampant until we've started immunizing people for it. Right. So the that's only been the last what five years. Right. But but they think that that's going to help people not get cervical cancer anymore. But right. in the meantime, right. Then we are we are using now immun immunology. Well, and or, you can also be a carrier and not have it yourself. Right. So it's it's everywhere. Right. I mean, I would find it difficult to believe that. Most people don't have it somewhere, but it's not causing cervical cancer in everybody because their immune system's killing it. It's only when your immune system can't kill it anymore that you get the disease. So, totally random question at the risk of sidetracking our conversation. That's fine. <laughs> That's my specialty. <laughs> I, I've read a lot over the last several years about people who have fertility issues mm-hmm. uh, trying to, or who expect that they're going to have. Uh, maybe they don't want to have babies yet because they're building a career or what have mm-hmm. you, but they deposit sperm and eggs from their younger selves and freeze them mm-hmm. so that later, when they mm-hmm. decide they're ready, those that sperm and those eggs are considered to be healthier mm-hmm. because they haven't gone through the aging process mm-hmm. of the ones that stay in your body. Right. Do you think we'll move in the direction of depositing blood in a blood bank to be able to make stem cells from our earlier self? Yes, actually. Actually, I know of, of a, um, a study that's been sent to the FDA uh-huh. that is doing that. And it is taking blood and depositing st- and depositing T cells yeah. or depositing blood with activated T cells and then halting their growth and and holding them in kind of a suspended animation. Sus- yeah, kind of thing. just like yeah, just holding them in that yeah. area and then you can take a little bit of it if you need to have help against cancer right. or you need to have help. Right. That sounds I mean, like black magic, but well, it's it was five awesome. y- five years ago. I invested in it. It's still, uh-huh. it's still working. Uh-huh. I mean, they're still working on it. Right. And I was like, okay, so where can I send my blood? Because now I'm, you know, I'm almost 60 and I need to get my blood in, you know, yeah. but, but I have the hope of having better immune system because right. I have testosterone on board. Right. And so, and exercise and don't smoke and don't drink to excess and don't, you know, all of those well, because things. Sometimes as help we you. age, our immune systems break down, mm-hmm. either because of the aging process and our genetics mm-hmm. or because we're exposed to different things. Yeah. And we have a lot more chemicals in the environment and that breaks and, down and our so immune system. So, if you system. have made this kind of a deposit somewhere and can go back and get the healthier T cells, you stand a better chance of being able to, to heal from these. Absolutely. Things. Absolutely. And that's. That is, I mean, I don't know why, mm-hmm. I, I can't mention, I won't mention the name of the company, but right. I don't know why they haven't come Exploded. through, but, but yeah. the but the FDA holds everybody back. Right. And so it may be the indication why they're doing it or well, what their goal is. They want to give false is. hope. They want to make sure Right. It's and it, it requires banking and it requires right. banking and having a system of sending it to the patient's doctor when right. they need it. Right. And, and, and it would have to probably be on dry ice. I mean, this is something that you would have to have very carefully sent. So in any case, that's out there. That is going to be so happening by somebody. So how close do you somebody. have to be to be able to make use of that? Like if I did that, could my young son later take some of my blood, T cells, and use it to help him? I don't know the answer to that. I mean, the genetics of that. Are, but, right. Yeah, I, I don't no, know I, the answer to that. I don't expect that. you to. I mean, and I do know going, that going, even going. if you have the same blood type, yeah. which is... The, an- the antigens or the proteins on your, on your blood cells, that doesn't always tell me whether you can have a tissue transplant, mm-hmm. you know, like a kidney, because your tissue antigens may be different than your blood antigens. So what okay. do you need? Do you need right. tissue or do you need blood? So I don't know that. I do know that if you bank your child's um, cord blood, ah. that that's... Too late for that. Yeah. <laughs> If you but bang, for those of you out no, there, no, but my, you know, I've I've worked with doctors who have had children after I did, yeah. who were able to do that, and I probably every time I delivered a baby, right. that where the mother was willing, I would either draw it into right. a little into a little bag and send it down to Wash yeah. U, who then use it for babies right. who needed stem cells and who who had some kind of immune deficiency or cancer or mm-hmm. something, so they would use those because they could be used on anybody, right. So they also, I also have. And again, a, nobody died in the process no, of making that. No. So. No, nobody died. It's just from, it's just the extra blood you would normally just throw away. Right. And so before the placenta comes out, we would put in like an IV needle right. and let it, and let this little bag 
drop uh, below the level of where we were drawing it from mm -hmm. and just wait for the placenta. We usually are just sitting there talking, doing nothing, waiting for the placenta to come out. And we draw the blood, tie a knot in it, hand it to the nurse, and it would go off. And it could be donated or it could be saved with, you would have to pay a yearly fee to save just your like cord you do, blood. Just like to put sperm in a sperm bank. Right. You identify yeah. it, save it, seal it. And then at some point, if you don't want it, don't need it, something right. you can you, you can stop it. you can release it but but basically it is a very cool thing and that's the way we started using the stem cells that have nothing to do with harming a child right i mean i was in the business of delivering babies not harming anybody oh absolutely absolutely so but i know there this was there like giving a blood donation raise if you when, go to the the red cross yeah and so i'm hoping that someday our children will be able to have bone marrow donations or T cell donations that they can save for themselves for when they get older. So when we started talking about this before we came on camera, uh, you were excited about it. And we were having a similar discussion, but you said there are some things beyond manipulating the, the, your own T cells. There's mm -hmm. some equipment, some technology that's mm -hmm. coming on board. Uh, you mentioned in our conversation today, testosterone and mm -hmm. testosterone is a natural, uh, growth enhancer for T-cells. Yeah, an immune, uh, immune stimulator. But, but you said something about a company called Chromogenics and something right. that they are making. Can Chro you talk about that? Chromogenics is a, a laser company from Wales. And they have they have several different lasers that they, that they produce in, and supply in the U.S. Me medical lasers. Medical lasers. Lasers for skin, uh, uh, skin rejuvenation and lasers for... I have an eye lipo, which they made, which is uh, a fat-dissolving laser, which then allows you to remove fat in the areas of your body that you don't want it. Not, it's not your whole body. It's just spot you can't just immerse yourself laser. In yeah. It. You can't just like stand in it, but I'm sure that's their next thing. Yeah. And so, uh, so that's, that's where I became, I became, um, knowledgeable about their products, but then they sent the scientist to St. Louis to give a lecture to many of uh, the physicians here. And I met him and he was so excited because I was a gynecologist. He said, you are not going to believe what my laser does. It's, it's for aesthetics. He said, but it's much more important than that. He said, you can put this, you can actually laser cervical cells that have cancer and actually laser them and the body will then, it's activating the T cells and then it kills it by doing that. So through a laser, we can do what these people are doing. Wow. And so he was very excited about that. Then I asked him about other things, and I asked him about precancerous lesions of the skin, like actinic keratoses. If you've ever been told you have that, that's a precancerous um, squamous cell cancer of the skin. Oh, yeah, you can just laser that. It just dissolves. From being out in the sun. Yeah, Not from being out shirt, in the sun. being on the beach. It's uh, plus genetics. but Working in the farm, driving a tractor, just being out in Same the with sun. basal cell. Yeah. So chromogenics has made the Regenolite, and it works both for aesthetics, but also for disease. Right. So, so many people that we can't laser with our other lasers. Mm -hmm. We were like, oh no, that's precancerous. We're gonna stay away from that. We can laser with the Regenolite and that's gonna be so, I mean, yes, insurance doesn't cover that because it's, it's they, too new. They it's don't too know new. Yeah. But eventually they'll find that this saves them a lot of money. Is this the one you were talking about that would do vaginal warts? Yeah, it'll do vaginal warts. You know, meaning that's HPV virus too, right. but you can get them on the outside of your vagina and on the inside. And usually, if you uh, if you do um, if you actually laser the outside, oftentimes the inside just goes away because the the T cells have been activated to that virus, so, and then it kills all of them, not just like we did psoriasis. So you do a spot. And it activates your T cells to that virus in that spot, but then those activated T cells Attack run the, around everywhere else in your body and find other places where yep. it is and kills it all. Right. So psoriasis. Psoriasis also. Psoriasis is is a basically an overactive uh, attack of the tissues, like a like an autoimmune disorder. Right. So it not only it's like how does it know if it goes up or down or down? You know, if your T cells are too active or or poorly active, right. then it brings them back to the middle and reconcentrates them on the proper on the proper T cell activity. So it's like teaching it. Right. So this, if you do one knee that has psoriasis, then in one treatment, both knees decrease or any other if patches on the elbows, usually psoriasis is, you know, patches on the elbows, but that's, awesome. that's so much Just from a light. Yeah, but it's a specific, it's a dye laser. Yeah. It's a yeah. different kind of laser than we usually use. D-Y-E dye. Yeah. 
And so it is, it's a very specific laser, and this is, this is following 20 years of research. Sure. Uh, there's only uh, one other way, just for people who are listening, there's one other way to, to actually treat like basal cell cancers. Okay, basal cell cancers don't go out to the rest of your body and hurt you. They just push through the tissue, usually on your face or your chest, someplace where um, you, you would be exposed to the sun. Mm -hmm. So the basal cell cancers, they, you can put on a dye, an actual dye onto the face, wait a certain period of time, and then sh use a certain, a certain light, color of a light, to, uh -huh. to then activate that dye, right. and then the dye actually makes that, that cancer at that area go away. Okay. It kills it. So it activates the cells that are killing it right there. Right. But this is different. This is That's activating awesome. all your T cells. So vaginal warts, uh, cervical cancer, psoriasis, basal cells. Basal cells. Uh, Precancerous lesions. I mean, all kinds acne. of pre ac and acne. Acne it activates. It actually gets rid of acne. If you do your fa three treatments of your face, it will. And I've seen all the pictures, and we haven't done that many. Now you yet. have this laser. I have this laser. And your staff is being trained. We're being now. trained it's currently. It's not available, but it will be very it, shortly. Right. It'll be and by September. Will be by September. Rolling. And and are there but a lot it, of these in the United States now? Um, not that many. We're one of the very few. So but there will be. We'll yeah. be a, we're well, a center, yeah. and we're going to be a center for training for chromogenics. So we will have a awesome. lot of doctors coming through our office to be trained. Yeah, so There's but, so many exciting things but that you're doing. But acne is one of the things that really, I think it hurts boys more than girls because yeah. boys don't aren't used to washing their face and putting right. stuff on, and they hate it. And, you know, they just don't, they hate, they think it's girly, so they just don't do anything. So they, they get acne, and then they get scarring. And so for boys... I think that this new, the laser actually gets rid of the acne, three treatments. If you have acne on your face and we treat your face in three treatments, we're, you're done with acne. Wow. No Accutane. Oh, that's awesome. None of that stuff. So, so that's that's an amazing thing that I think is really going to be good for the boy population. A lot of my patient's sons mm -hmm. get treated in my office for acne, but this is going to be a permanent fix. So, so we've talked about three things that are on the cutting edge <laughs> right. of, of modern medicine that can really help you with a lot of stuff, cosmetics and life-saving. And, and that is uh, taking your own immune cells and uh, taking them out, treating them to increase their uh, replication rate, mm -hmm. and then putting them back in. One is uh, doing that along with testosterone, mm -hmm. uh, giving testosterone. And the third is this chromogenics laser that's a the dye regen laser Genolite, called yeah. Regenolite. So these are things that if you're interested in, uh, watch this space and we'll be talking about them more. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.